They came without warning, a never-ending tide of the undead. Civilizations fell screaming beneath decaying claws and the chorus of hungry moans. But in the wake of the Great Panic, we stayed, we survived, and we're gonna take back our home, one day at a time, in Syracuse. In Pache Resquiscot by Rob K. I found this notebook at the bottom of my bag this morning. I was looking for my last can of tuna. There's not much in here. A to-do list from a few months ago. Groceries. Gas. Dentist appointment. I wish I'd used the space for another can of beans. I think I'll try to write in it every day. There's nothing else to do. It's gotten real cold. It must be well into January. I did the best I could, but I'm finding that I'm not prepared for winter. My boots are sturdy, but not meant for the cold. I haven't been able to find any good shelter for a few days, and I'm afraid to take them off. I fear several toes have gotten frostbite. Food is running short. I've been rationing it, but it will run out in the next couple of days. The last few houses I've come across have already been picked clean. Not so much as a crumb left. Game is scarce. Not that I could kill anything, having lost my rifle last month. My luck has to change. I slept in a ditch last night to stay out of the wind. The sun woke me early in the morning. I had a crushed Pop-Tart for breakfast and took the time to start a fire and melt some snow for water. The sky is unusually clear today. Perhaps it will warm up a few degrees. I've been unfair in regards to the weather. I may be on the verge of hypothermia, but I have not seen one of those creatures in weeks. Thank God for small mercies. Right. God. I'm surprised to find I can still use words the way I used to. My handwriting has become atrocious. I haven't talked to anyone or even used my voice for that matter in a very long time. They say it is a bad sign when you start talking to yourself. It must be a very bad sign when you stop. Ellen always wanted me to start a journal. She said it would do me good. I sometimes roll over at night and expect to feel her hand, and when I don't, there's the smallest of moments when I think that she must have just gotten up to get a drink of water from our bathroom or check to see if the front door is locked. Then I feel the frost on my face and hear the wind whipping by. I miss her. I've walked for hours today. I still do not have a destination. There are only two alternatives and neither one is appealing. If I make my way south or west, I will grow closer and closer to what I can only imagine to be hordes of the dead. If I set out to the north or east, every step I bring takes me farther away from supplies I desperately need and my only hope of rescue. If there is anyone left to rescue me. I will have to make my choice soon and learn to live with it. But for now... I have left that to another day. I decided to get off the road and find shelter in the woods for the night. I walked 30 or 40 yards into the tree line where I found a likely spot to build a shelter and settle in for the night. I gathered as much dry tinder as I could find and ate the last morsel of food from my pack. Food will be the main order of the day tomorrow. With this on my mind, I began to dig a pit in the snow to help insulate me from the wind when I uncovered a hand. The fingers were broken and blue and frozen solid. The rest of the body was in a similar state after I uncovered it all. I looked it over as best I could, given the stiffness of the frame and couldn't discern the cause of death. I sat back in the snow and watched him for a few moments. I decided to take no chances. I pulled out my hatchet and hacked off his head. The flesh was not cut or chopped by the falling axe head. He was too frozen for that. It splintered. I must find a new place to spend the night. I have not written here in a few days. Hunger has a way of reordering your priorities. My progress has been slow. I must stop to rest frequently, and I feel as though my pace has been getting slower by the hour. To make matters worse, the cold seems to be more biting when your stomach is empty. The pain is becoming intolerable, and it makes it hard to move about, although I find that writing here is as good a distraction as I'm likely to get. It is this that woke me this morning before the sun rose. I decided to make the most of it returned to the road in the dark, and started walking. The day was gloomy and overcast. It was scarcely brighter at noon than when I had started out. Shortly after midday, I came across the burnt frame of an old barn. Its beams were blackened and leaning precariously. I didn't bother to search it. Beyond it, I spotted a knot of crows. 
The cow they had been feeding on was thin and desiccated, its loose hide stuck to its ribs, and its abdomen had been ripped open by what must have been wild dogs. There wasn't much left of it, and it must have been dead for a long while before I came along. It was partially frozen, and had probably starved to death, so there wasn't much meat left, but I scraped as much out of the carcass as I could with my knife. I built a fire and cooked the stringy bits of meat I was able to salvage. It was dry and tough, but I was starving, and it was food. It looked suspect, but I wolfed it down anyway. I had hoped the cold kept the meat from going rancid. I was wrong. A few more miles down the road, and I was heaving up what little food I had had. It was mostly water. When I was done, I rolled over onto my back in more shape than I was in this morning. I need a miracle. A godsend.